Welcome to the grim, lawless 23rd century, following the fall of U.S. Gov and mass depopulation of major cities at the hands of the multi-trillionaire de Huberton family, baptized in radioactive hellfire. A rare mutation makes Turbo a fiercely pumped scrapper, haunted by specters from her past, surviving the post-apocalyptic wasteland one deathmatch pit fight at a time. But when she rescues the stunning trophy girl, the unlikely duo are thrust into a harrowing odyssey, evading marauding berserkers at every turn on their way to the ultimate showdown as they uncover the horrific truth behind the fall of humanity. Good morning, Jake. Hey, Kurt, and hello to everybody out there in Turbo Land. Welcome to another edition of Making Turbo Pit Fighter, where we're making a comic live on the air in split screen. Um, I'm usually happier when I'm drawing, but uh, you know, this is the this is the <laughs> tough part about comics: doing all the lettering, getting it all in, finalizing everything. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of comic creators pay a letterer to do this stuff and they just, you know, just write well, it out in their own scratchy freehand. That, I, I just want to, I want to jump on the back of that because I just want to take a second and thank you, Jake, for really getting all of this started because I, uh, in the beginning of 2022 made a decision that I didn't want to make a comic book by myself anymore. And all I really wanted to do was ink and package and market it. And so therefore I was going to have to go and find somebody who already had a property that wanted to play with me. And of course you called me like two weeks later. Um, and I really, yeah. I really, really want here in the beginning of this episode uh, for people who are struggling with making their comic frustrated uh, haven't started all these things that we have as creatives is doubt, 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 doubt. You have two things you can do immediately. One is join our community. Our community is not only just subscribing, but we have a community tab on YouTube where we put a lot of polls in there. I'm daily engaging our comments. Um, and of course, uh, giving any kind of resources that I can provide. Um, but the other thing is find somebody to make a comic book with. Find what you really don't want to do and then find somebody who really wants to do that. Um, there's tons of forums out there. Uh, you're just going to have to take a little time. There's going to be some trial and error. Jake and I have got a almost 30 year history, 20 of it just being uh, living lives and bringing families up and everything. But the other part of uh, this year making Turbo Pit Fighter is we do an indie comic exchange. And uh, the, uh, the one we have coming up next week is by a gentleman by the name of Jay Bethke. And the thing that's really fascinating is he's literally at the start here. And this is just like our own uh, Turbo Pit Fighter teaser. He he reached out, he asked me how to make one, and he just took his sketches where he's at right now, and he put it together. He sent, a, sent us a copy. I sent him a copy. He's going to be coming on talking about starting a comic book right from the beginning. Um, the week after that, we have Junction Jones with uh, TC uh, Pescatore and Loco Gonzalez. Uh, they're also with um, Scout Comics. <laughs> He's a little bit more, a little bit more farther along. A little bit more farther along. But here's uh, Chance Priest, who will be the, the week after that. Oh no, we take a week off uh, where you and I can just do some comics and influences uh, videos. But uh, Chance is a, um, a, a toy maker. Um, and I don't have that there, but, um, he also hired a fellow to do the comic books for him. Uh, so he's going to be a great guy. Hey, can you ha um, show that robot and girl comic, Jake? Um, yeah, right here. You just had it. So that's this is Mike White. He's reached out to us. 
I still haven't got my copy. I don't even know if he's got the teaser yet. He probably this will all probably happen next week, right after Chance. We'll probably have uh, him come on. Um, he's actually working with a publishing company um, and uh, has done this before, but is absolutely frustrated with the marketing and getting some attention. And then, of course, we're yeah, and, uh, we're doing a um, we're doing a three. Uh, um, three men in a comic review. This will be the first inaugural one where Dan, the man from Rave Sensation, will be uh, joining us here, and we will be reviewing Daniel Warren Johnson's Wonder Woman: Dead Earth. And I just say all of this to promote who we are and what we're doing. But I'm really, truly hoping that this just gets you off your butt said comic book aspiring artist and engage the world. Uh, find people that are doing something that's similar, if not uh, close to what you want to do um, and, and build, and build, build, help build a community. So super excited. I got ants in my pants and I want to dance. So um, that's what I got. Yeah. That's one of the, yeah. One of, one of the things that we, that we discover when we do those interviews, we've had a couple of great interviews in a row now, um, is that the other creators, you know, they might be a little bit ahead of us. Like we've been talking to uh, Cosmic Lion. These guys have what, 15, 20 comics already out and published. They have a whole working um, community of, of creators, artists, writers, um, you know, distribution and everything, but they get inspired, you know, talking, uh, talking shop, you know, talking influences, talking history, um, you know, so it's, it's really good to connect in that way. Um, just even you know, asking questions and getting, getting, and maybe I don't know, but uh, uh, I did hear somebody was saying something about this or maybe try this Facebook group or something like that. It's about networking. I think one of the things in, in the world that um, is never going to go away when it comes to business is the most successful people are people who network. And they keep themselves out there. So I know it's kind of contradictory as an artist <laughs> to want to constantly be out there, but it's just the nature of the beast. So yeah, um, you know they they also talk about these like you know here here's uh, Kurt and I um, here's our little secret. You know we only had uh, you know a little time period a week where we could actually sit down and make progress. So our progress is slow, but we do it together and we do it online on our podcast. And that, you know, guarantees that we're going to have, you know, at least an hour or two, uh, you know, to, to, to do pages and to make progress and to work things out. Um, you know, and it's, it's a great idea if you're uh, collaborating with somebody to um you know to have these little round tables you know and and that's what some of these uh publishers are doing they're saying like they have a like a once a week thing where they all meet on zoom and they go over the final pages and they talk about bleeds and uh you know paper stock and all that kind of stuff so uh you know uh, just try to get yourself you know it's like going to the gym try to get yourself into a regular time slot and then you could uh you know, you could really make progress because motivation, just like the gym, motivation is the problem when, when things fall off, you know? Yep. And uh, so, you know, it's all about getting excited, getting inspired. Um, you know, yesterday, <laughs> I was dropping my daughter off. Uh, she had to take some tests for her teacher certification. So I had like an hour to kill and or maybe two hours to kill. And I brought, a, I brought my drawing pad with me, right? And I did want to show you what I've been doing because I'm kind of like jumping ahead with my, um, with my sketching. And, uh, I have, uh, this here as this, this is going to be the, uh, the first two panels of the next page. And I'm probably not getting a decent shot of this, but, um, I'm just kind of roughing it out. And, um, you know, I'm trying to think about, uh, composition poses, storytelling, you know, does it flow from the last page? Um, you know, what's the dialogue going to be? All these things all at once. But I'm sitting in my car and I'm, I'm like, I don't feel like drawing. So I, I, I asked Siri 
Oops, I should have said that out loud. I asked Siri. Um, <laughs> where's the nearest com- Where's the nearest comic book store? Um, and Siri says, "Guess what? It's a two blocks away. There's a place called Collector's Cave." So I went to Collector's Cave, and wouldn't you know, they had a pile of dollar comics. <laughs> Not even a box, just and, a pile. <laughs> well, they had like they they had these like rows. They had a very weird setup in there. They had like these rows all set up. So I could uh, I could show you the stack right now, but I have to I have to create these EPSs. And uh, actually, I'm afraid yeah I'm I'm afraid some of the stuff is not for work. But uh, they uh you know I I ended up buying this, and so then I go into the car, and I start reading some comics, and I got my inspiration. Yeah. Right? I'm like okay. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what I read. I only read three comics before it started to get too dark. Um, I got two issues of CUDA from Avatar. This is the Vigil Brothers. And uh, a guy that I want to talk about with you named Tim Tyler. Um, Tim Tyler, yeah. And and, uh, he's an artist and also an inker. He's got some interesting indie stuff out. But then he goes, you know, working with these guys here at Avatar. This was uh, 1990. Which seems like really a long time ago. Uh, this was Joe Vigil's insides and Tim Vigil doing the story. I also checked out this Mike Kaluta uh, book, which I had never gotten a copy of before. Um, I think I saw the graphic novel of this later on. But this is a very, very kind of convoluted, intense, futuristic storyline. It was based and, uh, on a you know, stage some... play, too. He did a stage play. In New York. Was was Starstruck? Yeah, the, the writer of this. <laughs> it's crazy stuff, man. There's a, the, the writer of this is Elaine Lee. And uh, this is number two. Uh, this this actually came out in 1992. Wait, is that? No, did, I, did I misremember? Hold on. This stuff comes out. I can't even see the year on this. this oh, this is not. Oh, I'm sorry. This stuff is 99. So the, the, uh, the CUDA are both 1999. Uh, and I misremember that. This was the one that was from 1990, which is a long time ago. And, you know, it's um, it, Mike Kaluta's art is great, no doubt about it. But the story is way, way too hard to follow. I mean, and I, you know, I took a cue from this, like, wow, I wonder if my story is too hard to follow. You know, as soon as you, as soon as you open it up, they have this thing, what's happened so far. And you wouldn't believe all the stuff that happened so far. There's so many characters <laughs> and so many things. And I started to think, like, wow, do I sound like that when I'm talking to Kurt? Because, uh, you know, I'm just throwing stuff around. And, like, don't you understand? That's when the trophy girl, you know, comes out to her past, you know? <laughs> and, it, you know, it, that's a backstory. So, um, yeah, so all, all that going on. And, uh, you know, and when I got back into the car, I was like, wow, now I know I want to draw, I want to write, I want to uh, compose. And then, of course, it got dark out, so I took a nap. But story <laughs> being that, uh, you know, once once you have your inspiration, um, you know, you just you just got to look at some comics and get back into it, you know, or or maybe look at some of your heroes, you know, pick up. Pick yeah, don't go to Instagram. Uh, don't go to Netflix. Buy comics. Yeah, you get- have stacks. Of- I have... I have three like little coffee tables there, but I could get like two stacks of comics on each, on each table. And, and my studio is only like, I think it's eight by 10 <laughs> feet. So you can imagine these three, three tables, coffee tables or TV tray tables full of comics everywhere. But that's what I go to. I don't, I don't go to Instagram. I don't go to YouTube. I don't go to Netflix for inspiration when it comes to uh, making a comic or working on my comic. Um, and then and the only reason I go to YouTube when I'm working on my comic is to listen to music. So, you know, right. I, I think that's one of the murderous things that uh, uh, a lot of people uh, are just being demoralized because when you do go to Instagram, I think what happens is, you know, you might be following some really talented people and their shit just don't stink. And then you compare it to you and then your brain goes, Oh, well, I'm just not good enough. And then you're trying to do all these things that you 
don't want to do and really can't do. Um, and so then you've just demoralized yourself. So then you just spend three hours doom scrolling. Uh, in that, and that's what Instagram is designed to do. It's, to, it's designed to, yeah, to zap Instagram. you of any any kind of creativity. It's going to answer all of your all of your woes, and it's going to give you these wonderful little do dopamine hits. But when you have co you have comic books um, ready and available to yourself, um, I just don't know as an artist how they don't they don't charge you up. I, I, I got them everywhere. I'm, I'm I'm starting to get those sideways glances from my wife now. Really, really, we need all these over here. <laughs> they, yeah. they, you know, I'm like, God, come on, you don't understand. <laughs> right. No. Yeah, I need them all. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> I need them. I, I need them all at hand. I can't do. I can't do my thing without. Um. Yeah. So good point. And you know, another thing when you when you hear some of these interviews like uh, the Rob Liefeld interview, or um, I just heard the, um, the Alex Ross interview on Kayfabe. Um, these guys are off grid, man. They're not looking at phones and stuff like that. You know, they're not, not looking at tech. They hold, they're holding up and they're doing their work. And, you know, that's how, that's how you become a cut above, you know, the amateurs. That's how you become a cut above, you know, the other pros, you know, it's like, you got to crank stuff out, you got to grind. And, um, you know, when is that going to get done? And, uh, you know, I'm not saying you need to, uh, you know, quit your day job and try to, you know, do this stuff full time. But, you know, if you don't get that time in, it's just, you know, the progress shows and, uh, you know, or lack thereof. And, you know, you, you know, so many projects get, uh, you know, dejected and, and disillusioned because, you know, they're not going fast enough. And so, you know, make the time. And, you know, I'm to the point, you know, I used to have the same thing. Oh, man, my my, uh, my turbo pages are sitting right there waiting for me. I don't have time to do it during the week. You know, I, I can't wait. It was like, wow, I could do a half an hour of some sketching right now. You know, and it's so valuable because, you know, if you're, if you're doing it at not your regularly scheduled time, you just look at it with a different eye. And yeah. Like, oh, I want to fix that. I want to yeah. fix that. I want to. I want to. You know, update this. Oh, this needs a little more detail here. You know, all that kind of stuff. Do you know what the incentive for me is? What? Once we get once we get Turbo Teaser number two done, I'm gonna reach out to all. I think it's nine uh, nine uh, creators that were in the beginning that first round of our indie comic exchange, like Roland Man, um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, was it um, uh, Jason Sandberg, even Robin A Robin Ator. I want I want to get yeah. this in in their hands, and then I also want to get something back from them to see what they're working on and add to my 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 pile of inspiration. So once again, I just can't. Oh, what Jake and I have set up is really a a, a avant-garde art school if you will it's a it's a DIY art school but what it's doing is we're 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 creating a a major support mechanism here not only for not only for you true true believer and, and viewer but for Jake and I you know and uh, and a lot of times I get nervous Saturday night before going to bed because I think like oh I could have done more you know, Jake might be a little disappointed because I think I might have said that I was going to, you know, have this done <laughs> or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I remember I'm like, I doubt Jake is, uh, um, uh, um, you know, going to do going to have his stuff done, which is what you're working on right now. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, um, Jake is putting together the um, the word pages that I will then hand letter for the second second pages. So. Um, hey, uh, okay. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I, right now I'm going through a process, uh, in, in Quark Express where you have all of these incredibly flexible tools for lettering, right? You can do this, you can do this, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can do horizontal scale. You can do all of this stuff. Um, but now, now that I've uh, laid those all out and you can see like this example here, uh, it doesn't quite fit in the box. So Kurt is going to have to uh, extend the box, obviously. But um, once I have that all done in the computer language called PostScript, 
which is a high resolution computer language. Um, I'm, go, uh, I'm saving this and uh, opening it up in Photoshop and giving it to Kurt so that he can trace it. And uh, you know, then we can lay this stuff out. Let's see, some of these, some of these are crowded. Um, but right now I'm just finalizing everything. Um, I'm taking a, a last look at the spacing kerning and we're really going over this like fine detail because we want the, um, you know, the, this, this has come back to us on um, some of our testimonials. Remember, um, I think last week we were talking to uh, Tony uh, who has a wrestler zero. Yeah, and yeah. He was saying like, he was saying the lettering in Turbo Pit Fighter is so natural that it doesn't distract you. And that's exactly what I wanted to hear, right? That was like so validating, you know, to what we're doing because, um, you know, I just want the lettering just to, you know, convey what it says and not, you know, be like, oh, that font is weird or, oh, that there's not, not a lot of space there. You know, I mean, that because I am I am an OCD typography guy. And, you know, I get really distracted. You know, I was reading this uh, Tim Vigil, or the Tim and Joe Vigil CUDA thing, and they had some of the worst fonts and lettering in 1999 you ever saw. It was so distracting. It was so small, you couldn't even read it half the time, you know. And uh, so that, that's what I wanted to avoid. You know, another thing is also the, re the lettering doesn't always have to be printed 100% black. You know, why not tint it back? You know, it all depends what's going on on the page. Um, you know, think about those kind of things because, um, you know, the eye goes to things that are black. And, uh, you know, if, if they don't have to be black, you can read it. If it's 70% or 80%, you could read it just as well, but it's not quite as distracting. So, you know, really, really little things like that. Um, so this is page nine. And... What you can see here, I'm saving this as an EPS. So this is rasterizing it at a very high res. Oh shoot, I gotta do this again because I did not suppress the printout of the suppress the output of the page itself. So now I suppress that. Now I, I'm doing save as EPS. Uh, this is a great tool. Uh, this changes everything from um, you know online previews to high resolution postscript lettering. It, it can go all the way up to 1200 by 1200 DPI, uh, so that's page nine. And then you open it in Photoshop and you basically just tell it what resolution you want it to be. And now I'm switching over to Photoshop here. I'm gonna open up page nine because I have to give it to Kurt as a JPEG. And so I'm opening up the EPS. Here it says, what resolution do you want it? I'm saying 450 because I'm doing way more resolution than we need. That is making the file sizes bigger, but these are only temporary files, so we can throw them away once the, the lettering is done. And by the way, I do and the lettering on a separate sheet, which then I do scan in and um, add to my originals. So there's many ways of going about getting things done in comics, which I think, again, becomes something that's very overwhelming. You know, should I do it this way? What's the easiest way? What's the cheapest way? Is there a free way? You know, all, all these types of things. We're literally, Jake and I are still using uh, programs and processes that have never failed us since we learned them back in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you got to use whatever works. Exactly. You use for, you. works for you. Yeah, you're going right. to have to try some things out. Of, yeah, and some for you, some of you guys might only have access to like InDesign. You might have to pay Adobe subscription fees and this onerous kind of like, um, you know, payment models they have now. They can see you anytime you go online if you don't have a, a, a subscription, you know. Uh, but I have uh, I have some, some cool... Um, grandfathered in programs here from the 90s and 2000s. I got Quark Express and Photoshop. So um, I'm just doing what I need to do. And, uh, you know, your the tools might vary. Um, you know, hand lettering, uh, you know, it's an option. Uh, you know, we, we're, you can see that, you know, Kurt and I are, are doing this painstaking uh, extra step here. I, you know, we could just print this as it is, but we're not, you know, we're, we're tracing it. Because uh, you know we want we want this um, comic to be really special. 
we want the hand lettered aesthetic. We want it to have, we want it to join with the hand letter and drawing, you know, and that's something I, I've brought up before. Um, you know, even if you're making a comic, a comic digitally, then um, don't, don't be afraid to hand letter over the top of the fonts in order to give, um, you know, something that works a little bit more in, in, in uh, integration. Yep. So we have that going on, and uh, we are um, we we are rounding out the, uh, the the second teaser here that we've been putting out. Um, if you've been following along at home, we've been putting out our pages in six page installments, and uh, this is going to be the second one. So we're going to be uh, you know we're just using this to promote ourselves and to sh you know show our progress and to kind of reach you know plateaus and go to the next step. But, you know, I was thinking back and it really is, it really was a bit of, um, of work here to get all these, um, uh, to get all these extra pages done, you know? What do you mean? And, uh, what do you mean extra pages? Well, we have, we have six, we have six more pages of turbo comic that we're making, but then we have to do four pages of bonus material, which is going to be the oh, cover. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah you know, the back cover and then two pages of, uh, of internals, you know, which we spent, uh, you know, a couple of weeks on. I mean, you know, we, it's we true. used our, uh, we used our weekly time for, yeah, you know, you're rather right. than, uh, just, just cranking out pages. And, you know, that's the big difference between having, you know, a production team and doing everything yourself. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you gotta, you gotta take time to do that. And so, you know, four pages, uh, I mean, it's going to be good because we're going to have, um, you know, a, a whole cool little booklet and everything. But, uh, you know, it just it just uh, impinges, it cuts in. And, uh, you know, that's what I was trying to say. Like, you know, these guys that have um, whole comics do, you know, like somebody that was w working on a run of, of a comic. Um it's an it's an insane amount of uh, of manpower of of, yes. of, of labor and, yes. and time. Yeah, and just know? think of the coordination so, um, too. These are other skills that you're going to have to get yourself into, which is you know making sure you don't forget and <laughs> remind yourself. And it's a business, mm -hmm. no matter how you dice and you dice it and you talk about it. Art making is a business. Doesn't matter what it is you're making. It's a business because you gotta you gotta get it out there and sell. Luckily for Jake and I, we're doing this as a uh, passion project, if you will, um, a retirement project. Uh, we're we're <laughs> yes, we're retiring early every Sunday. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have part everything part we'll have everything set up. So by about six years from now, when we we don't have to work our day jobs, then. Um, We've got all of this laid out and we just keep going and we just have more time uh, for that. But I want to I want to share something um, in the way of art. And and I do have to um, put this on you, Jake. Uh, and I did bring this up mm -hmm. in an uh, oh, gosh, couple of couple of episodes ago, maybe four or five episodes. But I was finally able to get some coloring done. So I am the I am the custodian of the uh, Gardner Francis Fox Library, and uh, that's 156 mm -hmm. vintage paperbacks that I've digitally transcribed, turned into eBooks and reprints. Um, I started back in 2016, and I have um, uh, a link in the description to check out more. I am now converting um, the books to audio using. Um, AI narration and the um, uh, with Amazon, and I'm also taking time to do some new covers. I I did not devote my time and energy to the covers, so I'm saying so. Kothar, who is another sword and sorcery character that is, um, is a Conan knockoff, if you wear a blonde haired Conan knockoff. Conan, uh, Kothar, barbarian swordsman, is the first sword and sorcery book that um, Mr. Fox did. And I showed off the pen, the ink drawing. 
and I'll flash that up so everybody can see it. Um, but I was Ooh, telling, wow. I was telling you, oh yeah, dude, I found the holy grail of color drawing instruments. I think these are like thirteen ninety nine on um, on Amazon. If you have Amazon I Prime, you uh, <laughs> you get uh, you get free shipping, and they came the next day. I'll put a link. Uh, uh, in in the description to get a hold of these. These are fantastic. Um, I love drawing. I, got I love drawing. Um, uh, I I want color covers for the books. But this was the interesting thing, Jake, and I'm gonna uh, uh, show in just a second. I converted this to black and white. So I'm gonna show you the black and white version. And you can see the grayscale. I am totally psyched about the, uh, uh, the the opportunity in bringing color into, let's say, black and white work, drawing without it being too painterly, and still getting a black and white printable version and a and a full color version. So we have variant interiors, uh, twofold variant interiors. Um, uh, to share. The only thing I'm experiencing um, is printers, uh, excuse me, scanners. I have Epson workforce scanners I use. Um, uh -huh. And they do not pick up fluorescent color. So this fluorescent green and this fluorescent orange actually like powders out. So when you when you see a scan, now I was able to take a picture with my phone. Um, yeah, the, the, you you also have um, the, the same problem when you convert into CMYK with fluorescent color. They're not actually achievable. Correct, correct. So that and was a bit disappointing, but they still converted to a white, which was fine because that's really what they're being used as a value is a colorized white, like a heightened sense of light. If you look at this, this green next to this white, it's very, very close. You're talking about like, you know, let's say 5% darker than this white, you know, type of thing. So it does, it's not, it's not anything uh, uh, killing me, but um, I just was very excited. And as a matter of fact, um, this book is now available uh, for, um, uh, you can purchase it, you can get copies uh, in print, um, ebook and um, uh, uh, audio book as well. So I'm really super excited about that. Um, so, so why did he have Kothar if he already had Crom? I do. I, I, you know, that, that, oh gosh. So, so he has four sword and sorcery characters. And I think, oh. I think the, the thing about I, it. I think I know. Okay. I think I figured it out already. Go ahead. Go let ahead. It, let, you, you go ahead. Well, when he's writing for one publisher, mm -hmm. he's got to give a different kind yes, of exactly. publisher. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Right, because these guys are all uh, mixing and matching. And yeah, so Crom, Crom the Barbarian was published first in a pulp magazine that was published by um, Avon uh, Publishing, which was a big uh, uh, company that really uh, uh, put forth the paperback. So that transition from... Pulp Magazine to Paperback uh, Adventure Books was there. Kothar was for Belmont. Kyrick was for Belmont Towers. And then Nile of the Far Travels was for TSR's Dungeon Magazine. Or Dragon Magazine, sorry. Uh, like TSR? Yes. He did talk about the 80s. He did, no, 70s. 70s. 76 oh. uh, TSR. Okay. TSR is like a fledgling, wow. a fledgling thing, a role playing game. So it's super like not public yet. Um, and TSR is D and D. Yeah, Every, yeah, yeah. That's Gary Gygax. Um, and, everybody, and we. Yeah, to all you listeners, we were alive when D and D was invented, <laughs> <laughs> and there were these little um, and playing it. I, I played. I played. <laughs> well, I, I I only played a handful of times, but. Um, but, uh, you know, I was in like fifth or sixth grade and um, there was these little books like called Greyhawk and uh, all, they had little names of it. And it, sh it, it showed you 
how to get your dice and get your little figurines if you want to do it that way. And then, uh, you know, have your make up your stories and go and have battles and stuff. Um, and, you know, TSR was the publisher of those books. And they also had a kind of like, um, I think like a fiction line, right? And a magazine line, right? Am I right? Yes, the magazines, the magazines oh, wow. were, were really big. Uh, this, I have uh, uh, my theme folio. Uh, this is Expedition to Barrier Peaks, which on my bucket list, I want to do a, a graphic novel uh, using this module as the context to story. This, we played, I, we played this twice because the first time I died like halfway through it. <laughs> but this story is bonkers. It's bonkers. It came with a, uh, 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 like a little, like these were things that the dungeon master would show you. Um, you know, these are all. Right. And so and guys, I, this is, this is, this is, this is so awesome. This is like, um, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows what D&D &D is, but, you know, basically, I mean, to me, because I'm Probably. not a D&D &D player, but, to, you know, to me, um, you know, the the great thing about it, can you imagine if, like, because you make up a story as you go, and the dungeon master is just kind of like your narrator, right? And he's saying, yeah. okay, this happens, then this happens, and then the players all decide what they're going to do, and then, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, spontaneity, and there's a little bit of, like, you know, you can go this direction or that direction. Can you imagine if I was a drunk, a dungeon master, a drunk, <laughs> a drunken master? Can you imagine if I was a dungeon master? I would probably get a little bit, you know, too. Dude, you'd be awesome. Over my speed. Jake, no, you'd be awesome. But you'd be awesome. But then at the end of it, you know, at the end of it, you know, sometimes you say, "Wow, that would that would make a great story." Oh yeah, you know? dude. And then you they take some notes and then make it into a comic. Totally did that. Approach. It's why so, I'm so yeah. I'm so. I'm so into Conan the Barbarian and everything sword and sorcery. Cause as a kid, I just played in the woods. We had, we didn't get video games right. until, till the eighties, you know, early eighties. So it was always being outside and making up stuff. So, and any kind of movies you saw were either cowboy movies um, or like Ivanhoe or Charlton Heston and the warlord, which is one of my favorite movies as well as John Milius, which was heavily influential for uh, making um, Conan the Barbarian. But we, my dad introduced this game to us because he used to play real war games because he went to a military college. So he had my brother and I uh, play these out, but he found this and thought it would probably be even a lot more. So he got the ball rolling. And then of course, you know, this is what you would get this in um, the bookstore. So um, it, yeah. it was like, it was a total yeah, thing. Yeah, it, it's just awesome. Side sci-fi shops, sometimes comic stores, Forbidden Planet had all that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and now, um, you know, because I have to say, Kurt, yeah. and, you know, you might yell at me, but I, nah, I have to I won't, say, I won't yell. Um, <laughs> you, um, you know, you do have, you do have storefront businesses now that are just like little D and D shops. Yes. People come in and play D and D and other, and other games. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 the thing that you're that you might yell at me is the movie, right? So D Dungeons and Dragons movie finally comes out. Yeah. And I liked the movie. Oh, I did you too. Know, it was it was kind of it was formulaic, but it was good action, high budget. Chris Pine's um, awesome. You know, you're on the you're on the brink of your seat. Yeah, they had some actual actors, some actual meme actors in there. And how about like you know the, the company finally cashing in i mean i'm sure they made more money that year than they ever made ever since the 70s all combined probably I and understand. um you know uh and and now it's a franchise uh, it is popular you do see the cosplay people you know recognizing those characters uh you know and uh, and keeping all that alive i'm sure they're making another one now they did have a very strong female character also if you remember um you know, that was like this real ass kicking uh, uh, sword lady, right? Swordswoman. So, um, you know, really, uh, really interesting the way that uh, cinema, you know, takes you, it takes these guys that have been struggling and toiling with their little worlds of creativity forever. And it just allows them to finally have the payday that they deserve, you know? And it's all just from royalties of the meme.
basically, right? Yeah. I don't know if they were involved in the uh, script or the, you know, or any of those characters or anything. But all I know is that, you know, it was a blockbuster movie, made a ton of money, and that those guys are finally, uh, you know, whoever owns the rights is finally looking at the cat. Yeah, but that there's been other Dungeons & Dragons movies. There's been other, there's been car, Saturday Morning Cartoon, um, video games. I mean, they've been making money off of, uh, um, you know, this, this stuff. You know this 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 creation. Yeah, this but Gary guy. like a Hollywood blockbuster. No, there was there was tens of, there was tens there of was millions in profit. Yeah, I understand that, but there was a there was one that yeah. was I think in the in the nineties or early two thousands. It's not that bad. Oh, is that right? I, yeah, not that bad. Okay. I missed I missed that one. Yeah, I missed that one. So um, you know that that's just um another one of these adjunct worlds of creativity and uh, imagination, sword and sorcery. You know, com it's very comics adjacent. Um, you know, you have the uh, from from the designing the designing of those little figurines to the covers of these um, you know TSR publications. You know, they might they might just be like text inside and. Uh, you know how to play this, how to do the story, but they always had like a decent art uh, cover, you know, on the front. So great stuff. Kind of like a sci-fi novel. Feeds the imagination. Yeah. Goes back to uh, having comic books on a TV tray next to you in your studio, so you have you have no excuse to be inspired. Um, and you know that is also one of the biggest uh, issues we as humans have right now. Um, not only with being creative, but just existing in this uh, over digitized world is when the human mind has more than three choices for something, it chooses not to make a choice. <laughs> it's a scientific, a scientific fact. And so the thing you want to do is eliminate the possibility of having uh, um, uh, too many choices, uh, you'll probably get more done. So, you know, go on a, a fast, a diet, if you will, um, for just a period of time, maybe for a month. Don't watch uh, Netflix or any kind of streaming. Don't play a video game. Uh, just make that month about making comics and see what you can accomplish. See what you can accomplish. I think one of the challenges that would be fun, Jake, when we have the 24 hours necessary is you and I doing a 24 hour stream where we make a comic book. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That would be kind of fun. That'd be kind, of fun. Think, That'd be kind think, of fun. I think something like that has been done. Oh no, it happens all the time. People are doing that yeah, all I, the I time. Like a marathon at like a convention or something. Yeah. But it would be cool. Um, like you would do like the, let's say like the first, I don't know, like 10 pages or I don't know how, I don't know how many, but I would be working on the next 10 pages. So it would be this sort of like marriage and we could still do the same thing you and I are doing right now. You know, it would just be, both of us would be penciling, you know, and then maybe I don't know. Maybe then I would ink as you're finishing the pencils and you're scanning them and sending them well, to me and I'm printing them out. And, you know what I mean? So it could be fun. Yeah, it would be, it'd be really good for your chops, you know, mm -hmm. because that's that's how they used to do it, you know, in the old days when they had real deadlines and, you know, printer, they had print time uh, reserved and, you know, stuff had to be out on the schedule. Um, but, uh, you know, there's also... There's also the saying, pressure make diamonds, you know. Yes, and, um, yes. You know, some, some, sometimes we might overthink. I mean, we're making the comic that we want to make, and we're taking our damn time doing it yep. and all that, you know. There's nothing wrong um, with that. So, yeah, so so that's good. But, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we review on Comic that Influence, it wasn't done like that. Like, you know, it was done with somebody like, you know, I mean, the, in the old days, once you – um once you solicited in the preview um, book and you had your pre-orders, that's it. You only had like a couple of months to get that thing completed and done and printed and delivered, you know, including all phases of production. And, uh, you know, that has led to, shall we say, some, uh, you know, second tier 
<laughs> for quality, um, you know, you might have a great cover and a great concept, and then you solicit it in previews or Diamond. You know, they had these little publications that went out to comic retailers. They would give you orders, and a successful, you know, comic might have a couple of thousand pre-orders. And so now you have to uh, deliver on the whole thing, and then. Uh, you know, there would be a rush, maybe, you know, somebody got put in the hospital for a couple of weeks, they lost time, and then there would be this yeah. desperation yeah. to get stuff out, yeah. no matter what, and uh, otherwise you lose everything, and you ruin your good name. So, um, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, things look a little rushed, and the same thing goes for Marvel and DC, you know, you can, you can find some, you know, page 22s and page 21s that are a little bit rushed um you know in the history of comics right and so we are um, coming so up on the 45 all... minute yep. mark um i did get a notification uh an email message from dan he is standing by that's dan the man from rave sensation um which we're going to be then doing uh three men's in a comic review uh, Is that what we're calling that? Yeah, we're gonna do. We'll talk about it all, all, all when we get there. But um, also the link in the description to get to Dan's uh, wonderful, wonderful. You want to talk about crazy eclectic comics? Um, it, 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 this yeah, he's is some good stuff this is the guy. Know. This is the guy. This is who you want to you want to follow. Who who really has the stuff that's off the charts. So, um, but Jake, uh, not to put anything on you pressure wise, but what are the chances of you getting those pages EPS'd and sent to me today? Yeah, no, no problem. Cool, cool, I'm, cool. I'm halfway done. Cause right? when I, when I, yeah. when I show up next week, I will be hand lettering, which means that we will be very, very, very much on the way to, uh, getting the turbo teaser number two complete. And since we are, um, Recording at the beginning of March, I would suspect that the worst case scenario is the first week of April, we will have our printed copies, which means then we will be able to start reaching out to individuals and doing um, our indie comic exchange. But other than that, Jake, yeah. what a great, great and Sunday. If you're, listening, if you're listening to this years in the future, uh, March, April is going to mean nothing to you, but... We'll, uh, but what we are making our, our well, we got about a month um, to go. We, we about a month from now we will be done the turbo. I mean, you're going to be working um, on penciling. You'll Kurt, be penciling the pages. Yeah, uh, and Kurt, you did get the uh, updated uh, masthead, right? Did not that I sent you? <laughs> I did it. Really? Yeah, yeah. You didn't send it. Oh, I sent you. I sent you this high res, all finished, all graphically uh, neatened up, and everything. Yeah, I can check my, um, my one other thing. One other thing is I do want to give uh, Turbo a nose job on the front cover before we go to print sure. with that. Sure, sure. Um, because uh, I'm just, not, you know, I know it, I know it's the pencils I gave you, but I'm just not happy with I it. Can so do I, it. Wanna I can do it. I can do it. Give her a, a nose yeah, job. Yeah, resend that, that to lot, me. You know? Resend and, uh, that to me with the uh, with the EPS letter. Oh, yeah? yeah? You need the mass set again? Okay. Yeah, I sent it to you super high res, so, uh, so it could be used again and again. All right. That's why I asked. Cool. Thank you. So signing off, everybody. Check out our other channels. We got Comics to Influence. We got Creator Exchange. And we have all of our other uh, episodes of Making Turbo Pit Fighter going back to the beginning. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.